Hey guys, as you can see, I'm back with a third part of cheap JRPGs that I strongly recommend. Now, just like in the last time, I won't be including any of the um, super popular games that you probably already own in your collection, or you probably already know they're dirt cheap. And yes, some of the Final Fantasy games on the PS1 are also kinda cheap, kinda cheap, they're still on the $25 to $30 range, including these two as a matter of fact. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit tricky for you to find the Black Label editions of these two for that price, but don't pay more than $30, I'm pretty sure you keep looking, you'll find them for $30. Alright, as always, we're gonna start with the PlayStation 2, and the first game that I wanna talk about is one that's recently going to go down in price. Uh, about a month ago or so, the remastered version of this game, Romancing Saga Minstrel Song, came out for Modern Systems digitally, I don't think there's a physical version, but if, if there is, let me know in the comments. The PlayStation 2 version, however, is going to come down in price because of that, so get this version while you still can, if you don't want the remaster or don't care for it, or you just want to collect this PlayStation 2 version, which is the original remake version of the original Romancing Saga game that came out in the Super Famicom only in Japan many many years ago. Get it now because it's on the $20 to $25 range, maybe $30. Do not pay more than $30 for this open world saga style of game, you know, several different characters to choose from, several protagonists, beautifully looking remake as a matter of fact. Very tough, do not play this game without a walkthrough, it is absolutely almost indispensable to play this game with a walkthrough, otherwise you'll get nowhere, you'll have no idea what to do. But with a guide, this game is strongly recommended. Romancing Saga Minstrel Song. Moving on to another PS2 game that I want to talk about, uh, this is my sealed version of Chaos Wars. Believe it or not, this is a game that's been cheap for quite some time. It used to be kind of expensive, but for some reason it went down, even the sealed version. The sealed version, you'll probably find it for over 30, but standard used copy of this game usually goes for like 20 to 25 bucks. And this is a strongly recommended game. I know it's not for everybody because it's a crossover. It crosses over with franchises like Grow Lancer, like Shadow Heart, like Gone Grave, and other Japanese exclusives. But it's a strategy RPG and it's very fun once you get used to it. It's very fun, very addictive to play. And yes, Chaos Wars is the infamous game with the absolute worst, worst voice acting in English ever in JRPG history. But thankfully you can switch the dub to Japanese, so go ahead and do that or play with a horrible voice acting in English just for fun. Chaos Wars, strongly recommended. Now moving on to yet another PS2 game, and this is Grandia 2. Uh, this version is not the ideal version to play of this game because it suffers from some small frame rate issues and some lag here and there. But other than that, you know, it's still the same amazing game. Sure, the better version is on the Switch already, but that version digitally is kind of cheap but the uh, physical version is very expensive. <laughs> but the PS2 version, thanks to that remaster, went down in price, and now it's selling between $20 to $25. Maybe you'll see this game for $30 if, you know, some resellers have it for a mint condition and the area where you live in is kind of pricey. Don't pay more than $30 for this game. If you're gonna pay more than $30, go for the Switch version. It is one of the best Grandi games in history, if not the best. I know I said I wasn't going to include some of the overly popular games, but this is a PS2 RPG and the majority of PS2 RPGs are starting to go up in price, so just wanted to point out real quick that Dragon Quest VIII, amazing game, one of the best in the series in my opinion, is also kind of cheap. This version with the cardboard box includes a demo and whatnot. Uh, this uh, it goes a little bit over $30, you know, but the regular standard version, even with the demo, you can find it for... 20 to 25 dollars if you're lucky. Again, do not pay more than 30 for this game unless it's the mint, super mint condition of the cardboard version that I have here. Mine is actually kind of beat up, but anyway. Dragon Quest XI, you already know it's one of the best in the series. Heavily recommended game everywhere. Just wanted to tell you real quick that it's one of the PS2, one of the very few PS2 JRPGs nowadays that it's kind of cheap. Anyway, Dragon Quest VIII, and that's it for PlayStation 2. The only PlayStation 3 game that I'm going to recommend today is uh, one that I didn't recommend in the previous two videos, I don't know why. I recommended a bunch of PS3 games in there. Anyway, this is Drakengarth 
3. Now, I know this game has a little bit of a bad reputation for having a lot of frame rate issues and low resolution issues during battle, and the controls and the dragon battles are kind of a pain in the ass, but the story of this game and the characters, man, they make it, they make everything worth it, you know? Such an amazing story, such an amazing cast of characters, uh, the heroine, I mean, this is, this is one of the most politically incorrect games in existence, JRPGs in existence, and that's why I strongly recommend it. You're gonna laugh a lot, you're gonna have a great time with this game if you can put up with those controls. And they aren't that bad, to be honest, you know, it's, it's a tracking guard game, so it's a bit of a Musou style of game, you know, you fight against hordes of enemies, you can buy and equip different weapons and collect different weapons and whatnot, and it's a very gorish RPG, it's one of the most violent JRPGs in existence. Dragon Guard 3, strongly recommended, mainly because of its visuals, I mean graphics, story and characters, you know, oh my god, an amazing game here. In the previous two videos, I didn't recommend a single Nintendo DS RPG, that's because all of the ones that I own are above the $30 range. The only one that I strongly recommend, and it's on the $25 to $30 range, is Magical Star Sign. I know, look at the cover, it looks dumb as hell, it looks silly, childish, and it is, but in a good sense, you know, the game has a great sense of humor, amazing story about a bunch of uh, anthropomorphic students, uh, creature-like students, you know, who travel across the universe searching for her miss their missing teacher, and it's got some Star Ocean influence in there, some Star Trek influence in there, but it's a turn-based RPG heavily revolving around elemental magic, elemental strengths and weaknesses. Every one of your characters has focuses on one element and the enemies focus on another one. So the battle system is very fun and very intuitive. This is a game that I strongly recommend also for beginners. It's easy, it's not extremely easy, no, but it holds your hand from the start. Everything is easy to understand and it's such a fantastic game. I. It's a hidden gem, but I dare say it's also a bit of an underrated game because people, when they see this, they're like, oh man, it's probably a generic, low-budget, uh, turn-based RPG. It's not. Give it a chance. It's not a AAA game, but it's very, very recommended. Magical Star Sign, it will definitely surprise you once you play it. I have a PS Vita game! Oh yeah, the only one in my collection, I have a small, humble collection, but the only one in my collection that's kinda cheap and it's still in a $20 range or even less. And this is Freedom Wars, an exclusive on the PS Vita, so you do need to own a PS Vita to play this game. This is on the Monster Hunter God Eater range. You'll be going to a bunch of missions to hunt down these giant creatures. But, but actually, it's more on the God Eater side because it's futuristic, it's science fiction, it's dystopian, and you'll be playing missions over and over again fighting against these monsters. There's so many gameplay mechanics here when it comes to the controls, so much stuff you can do with the controls and with the action buttons, so uh, it's gonna take you a while to get used to this game, but trust me, it's worth it. It's not one of the absolute best PS Vita JRPGs, but it is one of the best exclusives on the system. Uh, I don't think you can play this game anymore online, that was the whole point of the game, but the offline story mode is amazing, in fact the story blew me away, the writing in this game was kind of like, what? I was expecting a generic game because the whole point of the game was its multiplayer feature, but no, the offline story mode was like, okay, man, you, you gotta play this game, man, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not gonna say anymore, Play it, it's dirt cheap, if you have a PS Vita, this is a must play and a must own. Now, the only Switch game in the list I have for today is a JRPG that is a masterpiece, one of the best on the Switch, and it's still exclusive to it, and it probably will continue to be, but um, this is a game that I'm not sure if you can find it for less than 30, I don't think so, you're probably gonna have to pay 30 or maybe 35 for it. But it's totally worth it, man. I know it's, it isn't that cheap, but for a Switch game, 30 to 35, it's cheap. Uh, this is Shin Megami Tensei 5. This is a masterpiece, one of the best in the series. The game's tough as nails, you know, it did not disappoint in terms of difficulty. It's still extremely hard, even on easy mode, for Christ's sake. But you know what? It's also kind of perfect for beginners because everything is easy to understand, it holds your hand from the start, the explanations of everything are top-notch, nothing convoluted, nothing complicated here, just remember, it's very hard, therefore it's a freaking grind fest, but it's 
one of the best grindfests ever, Shin Megami Tensei 5. Yeah, this is the only game in the list that I'm not sure if you'll be able to find it for cheap, but it goes on sale on Amazon and on eBay for uh, quite often, so maybe one of those days you'll see it for $30 or even less. Shin Megami Tensei 5, a must play and own RPG in your collection. Lastly, we're gonna talk about some PS4 games and the one that I want to talk, it's a weird case, this is Lost Sphere. Uh, the PAL versions of this game, both on the Switch and on PS4, which is the one that I'm holding right now, um, go for laughable prices, 10 to $15, and this is one of the best Tokyo RPG Factory games. Well, all three of them are pretty damn good, so pick them up if you see them. But the North American version of this game is kind of tricky, Sometimes you'll see it for 30, sometimes for a little bit more, but if you can get your hands on the PAL version, if you live in North America, and if you can get your hands on your PAL version, pick it up because your Switch and your PS4 are region free, so it doesn't matter, it's the same game. Unless you're really picky and you really want to have the North American version, good luck. With luck, you'll be able to see it for $25, maybe $30. I've talked about this game multiple times in my channel, so you probably already know what's it about. Turn-based RPG, kind of retro style, beautiful music, beautiful graphics, beautiful visuals, and um, a bit of a tricky battle system that's very interesting and very fun. This is strongly recommended. Finally, a long last, almost two years have elapsed since the release of the remake of Neo Replicant. It finally went down in price and I finally picked it up for $25 sealed on Amazon. And of course I'm holding Neo Automata here, I know it's one of the most overly popular JRPGs in history, you already know it's dirt cheap so it's strongly recommended as well so pick it up. But the star of today is Neo Replicant. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the original and in fact I recommended the original game on the PS3 in the first video. And this is one of those JRPGs that, well... It's not 100% a remake, but it isn't 100% a remaster, hence the name, the subtitle New Replicant version 1.227 whatever, because they just didn't know what to call it, you know, they didn't redo the game from scratch, but they redid a lot of stuff. To be completely honest, it feels like a remake to me, I consider this game a remake, not a full 100% remake, but a remake nonetheless. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Remake or not, it's a masterpiece. It's a strongly recommended game. And yes, this is the one that is based on the Japanese version that we never got, in which you play as the brother, the main character, instead of being a father. He's a brother, and you do see him grow. He starts as a 12, 13 year old looking kid, and then there's a time jump, and then you see, it, you see him as an adult. Controls have been greatly improved with the Nier Automata type of controls. The visuals are improved, the gameplay overall, everything is improved in this game. This is the definitive version to play of this game. I still strongly recommend the Gestalt version, the PS3 and 360, but this PS4 remaster, remake, whatever you want to call it, it's a... Man, this is a must play and a must own in your collection. And now that it's gone down in price, you'll probably see it often on Amazon or eBay or on your local retro stores for like between $20 and $30. Do not pay more than $30 for this game. Sakura Wars is a game that upset a lot of people who were fans of the original games. The majority of them stayed in Japan, we only got one that it's on the Wii and PS2, extremely expensive. All of them strategy RPGs, so Sega went the action RPG route just like Square Enix, but it did not disappoint. This is considered as a reboot of the series, even though it's not. If you play this game and if you know a little bit about the series, you'll notice it's a bit of a sequel to the anime, but it takes place in its own world own characters, you know, own story, own plot, you know, you don't need to play anything else or watch anything else to understand this game. Instead of being a visual novel, you'll be watching a lot of cutscenes, but very interactive cutscenes, you know, there's a lot of mini games in there, but there's a lot of decision making as well, and there's a harem, you know, you gotta pick your girl, you know, and bond with her to get her ending and whatnot, but the combat in this game is phenomenal, the controls feel, the controls feel so intuitive, the action is amazing, the camera, the movement, you know, it's just, you're not gonna have a hard time getting used to the controls. It's easy to understand, easy to get into, it's not easy, not an easy game at all. It's not a hard game either, it's pretty balanced. You're gonna have a blast with this game, I strongly recommend it. I know it's no longer a strategy RPG and that hurts, I wish it could have stayed one, but as an action RPG it doesn't disappoint, the visuals are beautiful, this is a great game and as of the making of this video it's still an exclusive to the PlayStation 4. 
However, this is probably if on your local retro store you might see it for $20 or less, but it's usually around the $25 to $30 range on Amazon, places like that. It often goes on sale, so check it out if you can. Now, this is not a JRPG, but this is a Sega Genesis collection. It has a lot of the great JRPGs on the Sega Genesis. All the Fantasy Star games, all the Shining games, which are the absolute best on the system. So, I just want to point that out really quick, that this is a must-own, <laughs> heavily recommended version. Uh, there's previous collections on PS3, PS2, PSP, those are also recommended. But so far, this is the best one of them all. So, yeah, check it out. A bunch of great JRPGs in there. Fantasy Star 4, that game alone is worth it, man. Okay, guys, the last one. I saved this one for last because I know you guys just wouldn't shut up about this game. You've been recommending this game to me, like, for since it came out, since almost two years ago. You wouldn't shut up about it, so finally I got it. It was a gift from my buddy Matthew, so thanks a bunch for that. Are uh, you ready? Yeah, finally. This is Yakuza Like a Dragon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, you guys were so right. At the beginning I was like, man, it's just an average... If you've played any Yakuza game and you play this one, you're gonna be like, uh, it's just like any other Yakuza game. It's a Yakuza simulator. You play as this guy, you know, who goes around performing jobs for his bosses, except the battle system is no longer action, it's turn-based. So Sega with this game went backwards, you know. That's awesome! Thank you, Sega, for making a turn-based RPG based on the franchise. But this game, it's a slow burn, but trust me, it's so worth it. The more you advance, it slowly starts hooking you up. It's a very story-driven game. You'll be watching a hell of a lot of cutscenes, but it's a phenomenal, mature, adult type of story. No kid saving the world BS. You play with a bunch of 40-year-olds, man! I mean, <laughs> come on! And yes, it's still a bit of a Yakuza simulator, but at some point of the game, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but it says so in the back of the box, so it's not really a spoiler, you know, it's just... Well, the events told in the back of the box are actually in, like, four hours into the game, you know? The guy gets betrayed by his boss, he gets sent to jail, and 15 years later he comes out. I know by the cover it looks kind of funny, you know, and it does have its, its comedy, but it's, it's a serious game. Don't let this fool you, you know, it's a serious story and the character development here and the bonding is like really, really strong here. Uh, you guys were so right, Yakuza Like a Dragon is a fantastic game, strongly, super strongly recommended. Alright everybody, that concludes my trilogy of cheap JRPGs that I strongly recommend. Some of the games are not as cheap as the ones you saw in the previous videos, but you know, $25 to $30 range, that's still cheap nowadays considering inflation and all that jazz. Anyway, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and see you next time!